Hello everyone, I'm Forum PX257, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe reviewer, and today I have a special video taking a look at some giant size knockoff G.I. Joes I found at the dollar store. Ah, oh, sorry about that. I have to do a quick format change according to these new YouTube rules, which came into effect not too long ago. Ah, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for this specific clause that allows me to continue doing this particular review. Ah, uh, here it is, clause 3A. If you review any knockoff product equal or, or under dollar store quality level, you must show the items on a brown Chesterfield or couch at all times. Well, that's very oddly specific. I don't know why YouTube would want that in their contract, but, well, here we go. And here are the knockoff G.I. Joes. As you can see, <laughs> they don't quite fit into the camera frame because they're kind of large. They're almost six inches long. I'm going to pop one open. And I got these... Uh, Dollar Tree, and here in Canada, Dollar Tree isn't as quite as common as Dollarama is. Uh, Dollar Tree is, I think, the U.S. branch. Anyway, yeah, we do have Dollar Trees here, and this is the only place I found these. As a matter of fact, I didn't actually walk into the Dollar Tree looking for these, so I did quite a double take when I saw what looks a lot like Firefly. And then I dug deeper into what looked like a whole bunch of other generic kind of looking guys. I found this guy as well, who was based on heavy duty. So I'm just going to pull these things open. <laughs> There's nothing on the back, really. One thing I did find interesting was they're calling this an action play set, which is not correct. And yet, the French is figurines articulé, which is articulated figurines, which is correct. I guess they just favor the French there. Anyway, let's just pop these things open because this is actually the first time I'm I'm taking a look at anything like this. And these guys I suppose would have five points of articulation. Yeah, head arms, legs, and that's about it. He's not terribly hollow at the back. I mean, he's just screwed together, but he doesn't have large open portions, which I was kind of afraid that he might. And, well, here's the accessories. Now, even though this is I, th I think they took the mold from the 2009 Rise of Cobra movie, Heavy Duty. They tried to give his chest a kind of a faux paint wash there. But they uh, kind of overdid it with the orange hair. <laughs> but, you know, his eyes are not badly painted. Quite frankly, I've seen some legit Hasbro stuff, which has very oddly painted eyes, but this isn't too bad. Well, let's see. His accessories. I'm not sure what this is from. This is probably molded from something earlier, possibly another or earlier G.I. Joe item, but it has this peg here, which obviously pegs onto some type of bipod or tripod or some type of a vehicle pintle, but it doesn't come with anything like that. Ooh, it's a little hard for him to hold that. Oh, his right hand actually holds it quite well. That's interesting. Because this also comes with a, a submachine gun. Um, yeah. His left hand seems just a little bit too big for that. I'm not sure what this is from either. However, <laughs> this is actually the whole reason why I bought this particular figure is because of his backpack. It has one tiny little peg here. And, eh, come on, it, oh, 
yeah, haha, -ha. I got it to stick in there just a little bit. But as you can see, this is actually molded off of Firefly's backpack. Firefly is probably some uh, a character that a lot of people are far more familiar with. So let's pull him out of the card. If I can. And here's Firefly. He's got kind of a rough paint job on his face, but again, it's not, not terribly bad. I mean, when you think about it, it's... That's pretty accurate to what the original Firefly actually had. He has several colors going on. I think they overdid it with this boots there, or maybe they underdid it. One side is not like the other. And again, oh, now that I'm taking a look, better look at it, he does have quite a few holes in him. And they didn't bother to put the camouflage on his back either. Oops. And let's take a look at this guy's accessories. Now this is something that I am quite familiar with. This is a gun from the 1986 Leatherneck, only scaled up quite a bit. Well, that's very interesting. He also comes with a backpack and a very science fiction-y looking gun. Very appropriate because they're both from a 1991 sci-fi. Again, scaled up quite a bit. And as you can see, these have little pegs for wires and they've actually left those pegs in. So if you had big enough wires, obviously the uh, old standard wire isn't going to fit these larger pegs, but if you had a wire, you could actually simulate that. And of course, this last bit of accessories comes with this rather infamous walkie-talkie. Some people call this a detonator or just a random radio. Oops. And of course, here is a 1984 Firefly. So you can just see just how big they've scaled up this uh, this particular accessory. Of course, the this mold is not based on the 1984 Firefly. This is most likely due to its stitching and the molded in knee pads. This is probably something from 2005 to 2008, I would say. So this probably would have been based on more of the modern articulated figure rather than this older version. But here you can actually see the, the size difference between a three and three quarter inch figure and a six inch figure. So this is kind of what you would uh, expect from maybe a, a Hasbro's G.I. Joe Black series, I suppose. And now, one of the reasons why I bought poor old Heavy Duty here, unfortunately this is the only Heavy Duty I have, and well, they're, they're nothing alike really. I bought him for the backpack. So now we have the backpack and his radio. And we have a... Eh, an almost complete... Oops. Almost complete Firefly here. There we go. Uh, I'm afraid I can't really put this in very well. Nope, it suddenly doesn't want to go in because for some strange reason they've gone the extra mile and have put in a washer inside just to tighten up that little peg. Unfortunately, it's it's too it's too small for this guy. Is it meant for this specifically? 
No, no, it's not. Well, sort of, uh, I guess, but <laughs> it's way too tight, even for that. So I guess the holes were all standard, all, all, all just a standard size, and they went and put a washer in there. That's, that's fairly interesting. Anyway, oh, I should probably show you the original backpack, because they scaled this up massively, and I... I'm not sure if the backpack ever changed between the 1984 original and the 2000s version, but even though the the, the shape is all right, some of the details have changed. Let me just whoops take off the cover there, and the insides are relatively the same, but um, just sort of oriented differently. Very interesting that. Well. Unfortunately, I wouldn't obviously recommend this for any collector, unless they want to collect something that's relatively cheap and, well, a good laugh. But they might make some good, at least good custom fodder if you're trying to make any 6-inch versions of your favorite characters. They obviously come with quite a few accessories that are from original G.I. Joes, so there's that. Well, thank you for watching this very odd video. I'll be back next time with another proper Vintage G.I. Joe review. Oh, I forgot about Clause 6A. Sorry about that.